Are you thinking about buying or selling a home in your Belinda in 2024? Are you trying to figure out when might be a good time to buy, good time to sell, or if the Your Belinda housing market's going to crash in 2024? I'm going to answer all these questions and more on today's episode. If you've never watched the show before, hi, I'm Josh Alexander, your local Your Belinda real estate agent, as well as host of Discover Your Belinda, your one-stop shop for all things Your Belinda. So in today's episode, I'm going to be going over my annual housing market forecast for Your Belinda for the year 2024. So if you're thinking of buying or selling a home, you're not going to want to miss this. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so to give us the best idea of what we can expect the housing market to look like in 2024 in your Belinda, first we want to figure out how we're ending the year because that's going to be a good indication on how next year is going to start as well as set us up for the rest of the year. So let's go ahead and go over that now. Now going into 2024, we currently have 48 homes on the market in your Belinda. Now if you don't follow the housing market every day, which probably most of you don't, let's give you some context. So typically during this time of year, as we head into January, we have closer to 200 homes on the market market or about 300% more than we have right now. So needless to say, inventory in your Belinda is much lower than it usually is. Now on the demand side of things, which we look at through pending sales, we currently have 37 pending sales in your Belinda. Now when you look at the average pending sales in your Belinda as we head into January, it's typically in a normal year closer to 70. So again, pending sales are also down, just not as much as supply right now. So if you're selling a home, one of the biggest questions you probably have is if I put my house on the market, how long is it going to take to sell? Well, in today's market right now, it's taking an average of 36 days to sell a home in your Belinda. Now, again, just to give you some context, typically during this time of year, you're looking at closer to 59 days. So right now we are in a little bit hotter market than we typically are in this time of year. Things have been slowing down over the last couple of months, but there's a good chance we're going to start seeing the market accelerate as we head into 2024. Okay, so for the remainder of the forecast, I wanna be completely honest with you. I do have another channel that's Orange County real estate related. And as I was doing the 2024 forecast for Orange County, I realized that 90, 95% of it was the same information I'd be talking about with your Belinda. So basically all of the stats that you hear from here on out are going to be Orange County based. They obviously still apply to your Belinda as being a city within Orange County, but I just wanted to let you know ahead of time. The only real difference that I wanted to point out is when I get into the appreciation section, I talk about how Orange County, I'm predicting that appreciation will probably be around 5%. However, based on your Belinda's track record over this last year and a half of being a hotter housing market than the rest of Orange County, I'm predicting that we're going to see appreciation a little bit above the Orange County average, probably closer to 6% appreciation in 2024. So again, I just want to let you know that ahead of time before we head into the Orange County stats. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get into the 2024 housing market predictions for Orange County. So the first thing that I always have to say with these predictions is these are just my predictions. I don't have a crystal ball. No no one's going to be able to 100% predict everything that's going to happen in the housing market. But what I can tell you is that I've spent about a month collecting this data, going through the research, listening to the top experts in the field, putting it all together for you. So that way, based on the data, my knowledge of the market, as well as what I see every single day with buyers and sellers, I can give you a data-driven, educated guess on what is most likely to happen as we head through 2024. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so like we did before, let's go ahead and start with the supply side of things. So like I said, we're going to be entering 2024 with extremely low inventory. However, as we head through the first couple months, especially as we get into spring, I do expect to see more and more homes hit the market, especially compared to 2023. In fact, I'm predicting that we're going to have anywhere from 15 to 25% more homes hit the market in Orange County in 2024 than we saw this year. So why is this? Well, it has to do with rates coming down. So as rates fall, more and more sellers are going to become comfortable placing their houses on the market. So not only are sellers getting used to a little bit higher rates and are probably understanding at this point, they're never going to see rates at two or 3% again. They're also seeing those rates start to fall so homeowners that might have interest rates of let's say four to five and a half percent might start to say, okay, it's close enough now. I'm going to place my house in the market, upgrade to a new home. And it's not that big of a difference in mortgage payment. However, I do want to point out, even if we do see, let's say 25% more home 
homes hit the market next year, that's going to still be way lower than the average amount of homes we have on the market. So inventory is still going to remain relatively low for the rest of 2024. So now why won't we see a giant spike in inventory next year? It has to come down to mortgage rates again, because there are still a lot of homeowners that have interest rates in the two and 3% range. And even though rates are coming down, it just financially doesn't make sense for those homeowners to move and upgrade unless they absolutely have to because the difference in payment is still pretty extreme. So just to give you some data on what interest rates look like for California homeowners right now, based on the latest information right now, 85% of all homeowners have interest rates at 5% or below, 69% have rates at 4% below, and 30% have rates at 3% below. So you can see that even on the lower ranges, there's still a decent amount of homeowners that have pretty significantly lower rates than where they are right now. So in order to make them sell, there really has to be some type of major reason for them to go into a new property right now. Now the second part of supply I wanna discuss because I get questions about this all the time is foreclosures and short sales. So yes, I do see foreclosures and short sales both going up next year because the economy is slowing down. I'm sure there will be some job loss happening over the next 12 months. However, don't expect some type of crash and foreclosure wave like we saw back in 2008. It's just not going to happen. Homeowners are in so much better financial condition than they were back then. So not only are they very well qualified to be able to purchase a home due to the last housing crash and all the financial regulation that went along with that, homeowners have a giant amount of equity in their home. In fact, 40 to 45% of all US homeowners have no mortgage whatsoever. That means they have their mortgage paid off completely. So if someone did get into trouble and let's say they lost their job and they eventually had to sell their home, they're gonna be putting their house on the market for market value, selling it at a market price, walking away with a giant amount of money, and they can use that money to find something that's either smaller or they can maybe lease for a while, rent for a while, or move someplace else. If you're sitting there waiting for all these foreclosures to hit the market next year, hoping to get a deal, you're going to be disappointed. And guess what? Over the last couple months, foreclosures in Orange County have gone up by 100%. Now, the reason I bring this up and kind of laugh about it is you're going to see a lot of these headlines over the next year because foreclosures are on the rise. The problem with those headlines is that foreclosures in Orange County right now, there's a total of nine of them. So a few months ago, we were looking at four or five of them in Orange County. Now we're looking at nine. So when you see these articles come out next year saying foreclosures are up by 100, 200, 300, 500%, just know that yes, the percentages might be correct, but when you're dealing with such a small amount of foreclosures to begin with, everything can get way overblown. It's going to be a lot of clickbait articles about that. So just make sure you understand the numbers. Again, right now there's nine total foreclosures out of almost 2,000 properties in Orange County. It's just not enough to make any dent in the housing market right now whatsoever. So now on the demand side of things. So like I said before, one of the best indicators of where future demand is going is what current mortgage applications look like. So how many buyers are applying for a mortgage? And like I also said, six out of the last seven weeks, those application numbers have actually been up, which just tells me that as soon as interest rates drop, there's this giant chunk of people sitting on the sidelines waiting to purchase a home that just can't afford it. But even when rates drop just a little bit, a bunch of them are coming back in the market. In fact, in the United States, every time that rates drop by 1%, about three to five million new buyers can afford to purchase a home again. And rates have almost dropped by a percent and a half just in the last two months alone. So there's a huge patch of demand that is now able to afford a home again as we head into 2024. And this is especially true for millennials. The largest demographic patch ever in the United States is still in their prime home buying years. They're forming families, getting married, having kids, and want to get out of that one bedroom condo or their parents' house and find a place of their own. Now, the interesting thing is this last year, 2023, baby boomers actually took over the top spot from millennials on the amount of homes purchased this year. And a lot of that had to do with rates. Because a lot of baby boomers paid in cash, they weren't really impacted by rates. So they were able to purchase homes a little bit more than millennials this year. However, as rates start coming down, I anticipate this year that millennials will again take that top spot as the number one purchasers of houses in 2024. Now that group of millennials is also why I think demand is going to remain relatively stable for the next couple years because they need to purchase 
purchase a lot of homes, which basically means that floor for demand is going to be set pretty high for the next couple years. So just like supply in 2024, I do anticipate demand going up as well, and it will probably go up quicker at the beginning of 2024 than supply before it starts to slow down as we head to the summertime. Okay, so next let's go ahead and look at interest rates. So by far, this one thing will have the largest impact on what's going to happen in the housing market in 2024. Coincidentally, it's also one of the hardest things to predict as we've seen over the last couple years on exactly what's going to happen with rates. However, what we could do is take the current trends and the data out there and give you the best educated guess on where rates should be going and what to expect through 2024. So let's first look at the Fed. So during the December meeting, the Fed's basically surprised everybody by coming out and saying that they are done raising interest rates. And on top of that, they're now predicting that they're going to lower interest rates three times next year, which was up from two times from the previous meeting they had. So this was huge news. So although it doesn't have a direct one-to-one -one impact on mortgage rates, when the Fed lowers their rate, it does impact short-term interest rates from things like credit cards, car loans, and most importantly, the 10-year treasury. So if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you know the 10-year treasury is our best indicator of what 30-year fixed mortgage rates are going to do. When the 10-year treasury goes up, mortgage rates go up. When the 10-year treasury goes down, mortgage rates follow as well. So as soon as the Fed's announced that, the 10-year treasury plummeted and so did mortgage rates. In fact, over the next two days after that Fed meeting, mortgage rates plunged faster than almost any other time since 1970. So it had a significant impact on the housing market and rates continued to fall ever since then. So with the news the Fed's gave us at the end of this year, there's a good chance that rates should continue going down as we head through 2024. Now, the second thing we want to look at is the overall health of the U.S. economy. So over this year, we did see credit card utilization go up pretty dramatically and savings go down pretty dramatically. So this is an indication that over the next couple months, we are probably going to see the economy slow down. And this kind of ties into what we were talking about with the Fed, because the reason the Fed is projecting that they need to lower rates is because they are also projecting that the economy is slowing down. So this is just another indication that rates should be falling next year, especially when the economy starts slowing down which most experts are predicting we'll start seeing sometime between the spring and summertime of 2024. So the third thing we want to look at is inflation. So over the last couple of years, we've gone from a high of 9.1 down to the last reading we had in November of 3.1%. So it's definitely decreased dramatically. And I believe we should continue to see that trend. One of the main reasons is the way they measure inflation, a large portion of it has to do with shelter cost. And unfortunately, the way they measure shelter costs for some reason lags what's actually happening in the market by about a year. So in real time, we are seeing rental prices go down almost all all year long in 2023, but that's just now starting to show up in the inflation data. So when that lag starts to catch up, inflation should continue dropping as we head through 2024. And the other part of inflation I want to point out is during that Fed meeting they had in December, Jerome Powell also came out and said that they're going to have to start cutting rates well before they get to their 2% target. And again, right now we're at 3.1%. So if we see that inflation creep down into the high twos, there's probably a good chance we're going to see them start cutting rates. Again, this is a good indication that when inflation goes down, we should start seeing interest rates continue going down. Down as well. Okay, so the last thing I want to break down, which could be a little bit harder to explain, but I'll do my best, has to do with the certainty of the U.S. economy. So when the financial markets have a better picture of what to expect in the U.S. economy, so when interest rates aren't fluctuating all over the place, when inflation is not skyrocketing, when there's more certainty in the economy, it tends to be better for interest rates. And the reason why it goes back to the relationship between the 10-year treasury and the 30-year fixed mortgage. So since 1970, the difference between the 10-year treasury and the 30-year fixed mortgage tended to be about 1.75%. So for instance, if the 10-year treasury is at 4%, you could generally expect 30-year fixed mortgage rates to be around 5.75%. However, during COVID, as well as during the 2023 banking crisis we had last spring, we saw that uncertainty skyrocket and the spread between those two go up significantly. So as more certainty comes to the U.S. economy, where you see inflation going down, you don't 
see spikes and dips all over the place anymore, that should start to decrease that spread back to a more normal level. And right now, again, as of December 20th, the current 10-year treasury is sitting at 3.89%, which means that we should technically have interest rates in a normal market around 5.64%. So I don't see that 10-year treasury going back to the normal spread this year. However, I do see it improving as we go through 2024. And as long as I don't have any major worldwide events that's going to pop that spread up again, it's going to be a good indication that interest rates should again be heading down as we head through 2024. So with all this data we just went over, seemingly in favor of rates going down next year, I have a hard time telling people that in 12 months from now, we're going to have rates at or above where they currently are right now. In general, can it happen? Yes, there's always things that can happen in the market that would raise interest rates again. However, 12 months from now, it's much more likely that we're going to have rates lower than what they are right now. So the next question that everybody is asking with interest rates is what should I expect interest rates to do in 2024? Well, with current interest rates sitting at about 6.6% right now, I can see that interest rates will probably be in the sixes for most of next year. We'll probably be in the mid to low sixes throughout the year. In best case scenario, maybe 5.75 on the low end. However, I don't think it's very likely to go lower than that. And one of the main reasons is the market has already factored in that the feds are going to be cutting rates next year, that the economy is expected to slow down. So a lot of the interest rate drops that we've seen over the last couple of weeks have basically been factored in, assuming that we're going to have a slower economy and the feds are going to be reducing rates next year. So could we get below 5.75% next year? There's always a way to do that. However, I think we have to have a more major recession next year or the Fed start cutting rates much more aggressively than we thought they were going to in order to see rates below that number. So I would expect if you're trying to purchase a home that you're going to see rates somewhere in the low sixes, maybe high fives throughout all of 2024. Okay, so for the next prediction, let's go ahead and look at home prices in Orange County. What should they be doing in 2024? So this one, besides interest rates, is going to have the second largest impact on affordability. So I know a lot of you are interested on what to expect with appreciation next year. Now, right now, if you look at the top experts, both nationally and locally, I kind of put everything together, looking at over 100 different expert opinions on where they think prices are going next year. And they range anywhere from negative 2%, which Redfin says nationwide, to expect home prices to fall to 11% increase in Orange County from OC Register's Jeff Lazarson. So again, there's a pretty wide variety in what people think. However, when you average all these together, it ends out nationwide being about 3.11% increase in home prices throughout 2024 is the general prediction. However, as most of you know, real estate is local. So when we look at these and just factor in the ones that are looking at California and Orange County specifically, that average actually goes up to 5.44% appreciation. So you can see that California is expected to have higher appreciation than the United States as a whole. Okay, so what do I think? Well, based on Orange County being in a stronger position for things like jobs, income, there's a lot less construction going on in Orange County, as well as the current trends happening in the market and what I see and talk with with buyers and sellers on a daily basis, I'm being a little bit more conservative and I'm saying we'll probably see about 5% appreciation in Orange County next year, which is pretty similar to an average average year in Orange County in terms of appreciation. However, I do think that the majority of that appreciation will probably happen within the first six months of the market because like I discussed before, I think demand is going to go up much faster than supply over the first couple months of the year. That's going to create bidding wars and prices being driven up a little bit faster before it starts normalizing as we head to the summertime because rates should continue dropping a little bit and more and more sellers are going to say, okay, these rates are low enough for me to put my house in the market. You're going to start start seeing more homes hit the market at a time of the year where you typically see buyer demand peak, which is usually at the end of spring, early summer. So as supply starts going up, demand is going to peak, slowly falling a little bit, which should create a more balanced market for the back half of 2024 in Orange County. Okay, now briefly, I just wanna discuss rentals for a second. So yes, affordability at the beginning of next year should be better, which theoretically should allow more people to purchase homes. However, homes in Orange County are still very unaffordable for a lot of people. So I don't see the demand for rentals going down anytime soon. In fact, a USC study just came out showing that it's only projected that Orange County is going to be building about 2,600 rental units, 2024 and 2025. And they're projecting that rental prices will go up 100 
$100 next year and $100 a year after that. So if you're currently renting a property, I would expect your rental prices to continue climbing over this next year. Okay, so the Orange County housing market has a lot of momentum going to 2024. However, it's not without its risks. So let's go ahead and review some of the risks that I'm watching for as we head into 2024 that could negatively impact the housing market. Okay, so number one is that inventory starts going up faster than demand as we head through 2024. So again, I don't think this is likely, but we are seeing rates drop, so more sellers might come to the market. And on top of that, you are seeing the economy slow down, so there might be more forced sales. So there is some way of seeing more homes hitting the market than we expected as we go through 2024. However, we'd have to see all the current trends reverse for that to be able to make that a reality. So if we do start seeing rates drop and we see the economy start cooling down, again, like I said before, when rates drop, buyers tend to react faster than sellers. Because when sellers see rate drops, they might get excited, but there's also a lot of rate volatility going on. So they're typically waiting a much longer period of time. And we wanna see if rate drops are actually gonna be more permanent or if it's just a temporary dip and then it's gonna go back up again. Because you have to think about it, when you sell a home, you purchase another one, during that entire period, if rates don't stay low, that could really impact your home sale as well as you purchasing a home and all the financials involved. So sellers tend to be a little bit slower entering the market when rates go down. But on the buying side of things, as soon as rates drop that week, you see more applications being made and more people entering the market. So we'd have to see a complete reversal of that normal trend that we usually see anytime rates drop in order for us to see housing prices start going down because more inventory hit the market than demand. So the next risk I'm watching out for is credit card utilization and savings go crazy. So it's no secret that over the last couple of years during the pandemic, people have been spending money like crazy. So their credit card utilization is going up, their savings is going down, it makes sense. And right now, most people are predicting that that will come to an end sometime spring or summer of next year. And if the Fed has threaded the needle correctly and got the interest rates correctly, they're hoping for that soft landing where you see a little bit of job loss. It's not going to significantly shake up the US economy. However, if they miscalculated that and the economy basically gets screeched to a halt, that could definitely cause a lot more people to lose their job and people for selling their homes. So is that likely? I don't think so. Based on the current information we have, I don't see that happening. But you can see a scenario where no matter how much the feds drop the interest rates, it just doesn't spur buyer demand enough to keep up with inventory and you could see home prices fall. Now, do I see home prices falling back like in 2008? No, we talked about that before, the reasons why. However, I could see that we could lose a few percent of appreciation over 2024 if we get into a much deeper recession that everybody is thinking at this point. So the final risk that I'm always aware of is unpredictable world events that are going to dramatically impact the US economy and the US housing market. So right now we've got two wars going on. There's a bunch of unrest going around the entire world. So there are different things happening that we are keeping our eye on that could potentially have an impact on the US economy. However, if you're waiting to purchase a home for the entire world to be at Kumbaya and everybody getting along with each other, you're never gonna own a home. So what you have to do is analyze your personal risk, look and make sure you're making a smart financial decision when you purchase a home. Because like I said, if you're waiting for the perfect time to buy a home where there's no risk whatsoever, you're going to be waiting forever. Okay, so we've gone through a lot of data, so I appreciate you sticking around with me this long. Again, if you find this information useful, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and that follow button because I put out new content every single week. So now we're gonna go over my recommendations for both buyers and sellers if you're thinking about making a transaction in 2024. So let's go ahead and start with buyers first. Okay, so buyers, right now, due to the higher interest rates we saw in October, we're seeing a slight decline in housing prices as we end the year, and on top of that, because interest rates are now much lower than they were just a few weeks ago, affordability right now is probably the best it's been since February of 2023. So if you're thinking of purchasing a home right now, I highly recommend that you start talking to a lender, get that process started, because if you can get a jump start on it, you're going to be in a much better position because as we head through next year, like we talked about, there's a good chance that affordability is going to be eroded relatively quickly within the first six months. So there's a window of opportunity you have right now before we see the spring market start to explode to be able to get into a home with a little bit less competition and still get a great price and a good interest rate, especially compared to what's happened over the last year. So if you've watched this channel before, you probably know what I'm about to say, but if you're trying to purchase a home, you should never purchase a home based on 
speculation on what you think the market may or may not do six months, a year from now, leave that to the home flippers. If you're like most home buyers who are purchasing a home for them and their family to live in, there's really just three questions you need to ask yourself to figure out if buying a home is right for you. So number one, Am I planning on living there for five or more years? Number two, am I able to get into the neighborhood I like with the amenities I want within my budget? And then number three, do I have a stable job? Now, if you can answer yes to all three of these questions, then it's probably a good time to at least explore the option of purchasing a home. However, to answer these questions, you kind of have to deep dive a little bit to figure some of this information out. So let's go over exactly how you do that. So the absolute first step you should be doing when you're trying to purchase a home is you need to reach out to a trusted lender so they can work with you figure out the numbers and figure out exactly what your payments would be and how much home you can afford. Now, just because they tell you you can afford a million dollar home, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should be purchasing a million dollar home because the next step is going through and actually looking at your budget to make sure you can afford what those mortgage payments are going to be. So you're going to want to calculate things like utilities, home maintenance cost, HOAs, insurance, all those type of things that come with owning a home. And on top of that, make sure you have some money set aside left over as an emergency fund in case you need to fix something, you lose your job temporarily, all the tires on your car need to be changed. You need to make sure that all of your money is not going towards your down payment, that you have some set aside in case of emergency to make sure that you're comfortable purchasing a home and you're not going to get into financial issues when you do so. Now, if you don't have a trusted lender that you feel confident talking to, feel free to reach out to me anytime. I'll be able to give you a list of great referrals that you can use. Talk to them. They're more than happy to explain everything that you need to know, answer all your questions you have with no pressure whatsoever. Okay, so you've talked to the lender, you've gone through your budget, you know how much is coming in, going out every single month, and have a much better idea of what type of mortgage you can comfortably afford. The next step is to go on a site like Zillow, Redfin. You can talk to an agent who can get you direct access to the MLS and really start looking at what type of properties you can afford based on that mortgage payment and see if you can find homes in the area you want with the amenities you want. That's going to be a very indication if your home search is going to stop right there and you're going to, have to save some more money up, get a different job with higher income, or if you can continue. If you're looking at these places and you find only one or two that are popping up, it's probably going to be a challenge for you to find the right property to be able to move in and be happy with. However, on the other side of things, if you type in that budget and you're finding multiple options popping up every single week, then there's a good chance that you're going to be able to find the right home to fit you and your family's needs and you can kind of move on to the next step. So the next step is taking those type of homes that you're seeing that you like, that you can afford and making sure that those homes are going to be able to fit you and your growing needs over the next couple years. Because when you're in real estate, as long as you purchase for the long run, you don't have to worry about home prices going down, going up. Over the long run, home prices have always gone up. So the longer you can plan on owning your home for and know that that house is going to serve exactly what you need, the less risk you're going to have when you purchase a home. So if you can see yourself living in that home, maybe your family expands by one or two and you can still live in that property for five, 10, 15 years, then again, you know that you can make a financial decision that's going to be comfortable that you really don't have to worry about. Because over those 10, 15 years, when you go to sell your home, you know that history has shown that you're always going to be able to sell it for a profit and then use that to purchase your next home. And then the final step you wanna make sure you do before you move forward is make sure that you're happy with your job. So if you can see yourself there and not wanting to quit because your manager is horrible and you can see yourself there for the long term, the company's a stable company, you've been there a while and you know you're not gonna have issues, Again, it's going to be a much easier decision when purchasing a home because you have that financial stability. However, if you think you might have to quit sometime in the near future, it's too far away, the commute's too big, and you just don't wanna do it anymore or something like that, then you might really wanna take a step back, reconsider, make sure you look at all your options. How easy is it going to be for you to find a new job? Is it in high demand, the area you're looking at? And really figure out if it makes sense for you to purchase right now because you wanna have that job stability when you have that mortgage because it is a long term commitment and you need to be able to make those payments. So obviously you can't see the future. You don't know with 100% certainty that you're going to stay at that job for the next five or 10 years. However, you can have a pretty good gut understanding if you like the place you work and if that company is stable or not. So if all of that checks out, then congratulations. You're probably in a good position to be able to purchase a home. The next thing I always recommend doing is sitting down with an agent like myself and really having them explain the entire home buying process. So whether you've done it before or 
or it's your first home purchase, you wanna make sure you have a good understanding from where you are now all the way through escrow to getting the keys handed to you. So what does it take to get offers accepted in today's market? What does escrow look like? What are contingencies looking like? You want all that information on the top of your head so that way when you start going through it, you're not confused, you're not stressed, you know exactly what to expect every step of the way. In my experience, that's one of the best things you can do as a home buyer because it's gonna make the entire process so much less stressful and so much more enjoyable. So when you get to the finish line and get those keys handed to you, you're not tearing your hair out, wishing that it was over sooner. You're excited, you're moving in, and you're able to have a new chapter in your life. Now, if you do wanna have one of those home buyer consultations, depending on where you're watching this, you can either check out a link in my bio, the description below, or the comment section below, and I'll drop a calendar link where you can go through, schedule a time to talk. They typically take about 30 to 60 minutes to go through everything, but that way we can get together, figure out exactly what you need for your individual situation, explain everything, answer all of your questions, so that way when you are ready to purchase a home, you can hit the ground running, you know exactly what to expect, and you can make a smart financial decision decision for you and your family. Now, if you aren't quite ready to go that far and have that buyer consultation, but still want to stay updated on what's happening in the Orange County market, make sure you check out the links in my bio and below as well, because I have a link for a newsletter sign up sign up. It's a weekly newsletter. It gives you everything that's going on in the market. That way you can stay informed. You know what's happening. So when you are ready to hit the ground running and start that home buying journey, you already know what the market's doing. You know what to expect. And again, it just makes your life so much easier. Okay. So now on the selling side of things. So sellers, if you're thinking of selling your home in 2024 and you're really trying to figure out the sweet spot of the most amount of demand with the least amount of competition, I have a feeling it's probably going to be a little bit earlier this year, probably at the end of February early March is going to be ideal timing all the way through maybe the end of April. After that, you're going to have a lot more competition entering the market as the traditional housing market picks up as we go through the end of spring into summer. So if you're trying to find that sweet spot, having your house ready earlier rather than later this year is probably going to give you the best results. Okay, so what should you be doing to get your house prepared for sale if you have a few months left? So number one is declutter. So we're getting towards the end of the year, early next year. It's a good time to go through all of your old stuff and get rid of the stuff that you're no longer using. So for me personally with kids, this is typically when we go through all their toys, their clothes, after we have a bunch of new stuff coming in for Christmas and trying to clean out as much as possible. It's just a good idea to go through your house, get rid of all of those type of things, furniture you don't use anymore, and basically eliminate as much as possible because when buyers come through your house, the cleaner and the less stuff you have, the bigger the house is going to look. So it's going to be to your advantage to get that done early and have it ready to go when you're ready to list. Number two is depersonalize. So I know this one could be emotionally tough, but typically most homeowners wanna walk into a house and be able to picture themselves living there. And if they have photos of you and your family all over the place reminding them that it's not their home, typically it's not a great first impression. So you wanna go through, find those dressers, the walls, any place with family photos and go ahead and take those down, store them, get ready to move them onto your next place. But you do want to take them down, either replace them with artwork or you can just take them down entirely. So the next one typically happens usually a week or two before you're ready to get pictures done, but that is basically a deep clean of the house. So you want to go through, get the carpets cleaned or replaced depending on how dirty they are, steamed clean that tile, wash your windows, go through the entire house, make sure it's dusted top to bottom from fan blades all the way to baseboards and just want to overall make sure it's as clean as possible. You definitely want to focus on places like the bathroom, the kitchen, deep clean those areas because those are the areas buyers are looking for and they want to make sure that it looks clean, updated, and everything's well kept. So if you do that, you're going to have a much better chance of selling your home quickly once it hits the market. So the next thing down the list is first impressions. So in today's market, most buyers are seeing your house for the first time online. So having great photos and videos is extremely important, but we'll go ahead and get to that later. What I wanna talk about here is first impressions when they pull up to your house for the first time. Does your front yard sparkle? So if you go to your front yard, you take a look around, you've got dead spots in the grass, you've got flower beds that are dead, you have bushes that haven't been trimmed, you want to go through and make sure you clean that up. So you want to go through, you want to plant new flowers, you want to put some bark down on any of the dirt areas, make sure those bushes are trimmed, the trees are trimmed, there's no dead grass spots throughout. You just want to make sure you're giving the best first impressions possible. And on the house side of things, 
pressure wash the house and driveway if you can. And an easy tip to help make a better first impression is paint the front door. So that's the first touch point that buyers are going to have. So if you have a nice freshly painted door and maybe new hardware on it as well, it's a great way to start off their experience as good as possible and give you the best shot of them putting in an offer on your home. Now the fifth thing you wanna look at is pricing strategy. So it's always extremely important to price your house correctly the first time out of the gates. But in 2024, it's definitely going to be something you need to focus on because in buyer's mind, the longer they wait, interest rates are going to continue to go down, making homes more affordable, even if prices are going up slightly. So there's no incentive for them to purchase a home that is overpriced right now because they can wait a little bit longer and more homes become affordable for them, at least for the first half of the year. So if you don't have the right pricing strategy out of the gate and really deep dive on those comparable sales, not only looking at bed, bathroom, and in the neighborhood, you want to make sure you're looking at, does it have a pool? Does it have a view? What type of updates are in the property? What type of work has been done? to it. You want to make sure you're using all of that when you calculate the fair market value of your home. And please make sure you do not overprice your home when you put it on the market. Those first two to three weeks is going to give you the best chance of getting a great offer on your home. And if you waste that by overpricing your home, you're going to have to reduce prices and buyers start to jump on that offering even lower prices. And you're going to end up with a lower priced home. It's in the data. It happens every single year. People overprice their home, they get too excited about the prices going up, and then they end up with a lower price because they didn't do it out of the gate correctly. Okay, and finally, marketing. So if you do not have a good marketing strategy going in to sell your home, especially as we get farther into the year when you're gonna have more and more competition, you're just going to have an extremely hard time standing out. I see it every single month of every single year. You have sellers go out there on their cell phones, take some underexposed photos of their house, everything's dark, you can't see anything, they give it to their agent, post it online, and hope it sells. Now in an extremely hot seller's market, will you be able to sell your home in that case? Sometimes yes, however, are you getting the highest value for your home? Absolutely not. So in today's age, you have to make sure you're meeting the buyers where they are. And that means your marketing strategy has to be expansive to get the maximum amount of qualified home buyers looking at your property as possible. So you not only have to have the basics of high quality professional photos, short and long form video, but also you have to look at drone shots, 3D walkthroughs, as well as targeted Google ads, as well as social media marketing. And on top of that, mailers, open houses, and anything else that needs to be done to be able to reach the buyers where they are so they can see your property, giving you the best chance of getting multiple offers and getting the highest price possible for your house. So again, can you sell a house with maybe just professional photos? Most likely, yes. However, you're not going to get the best price for your home. So if you're trying to net the most amount of money, you need to make sure you have a marketing strategy that is all encompassing. Now, if you wanna learn more about marketing strategies that work in 2024, feel free to reach out to me anytime. You can call, text, email, or again, click the links in my bio or the description below, and we can set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting where we can go over this in more detail so you understand what needs to be done to be able to sell a home for the maximum price possible in 2024. And again, if you're thinking of selling, but you're just not quite there yet, but want to stay updated on what's happening in the market, click that link, get the newsletter. You'll get updates weekly on what's happening. So that way, when you are ready, you already one step ahead, you know what's going on and you can hit the ground running. Now, one last thing, if you do want more information about buying or selling a home in 2024 and want some free resources, if you click that link in my bio, there'll be a 25 step guide to buying a home, 25 step guide to selling a home, as as well as how to budget to purchase a home all free for you. All you need to do is click that link and you have access to it as well. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you again so much. I know there's a lot of data. This is a very long video, but I do appreciate it because I spend a lot of time gathering all this information to be able to get to you and hopefully give it to you in a concise way that makes sense so you can understand what should be happening in the 2024 housing market in Orange County so you can better prepare if you're thinking of buying or selling a home. And one last thing, again, if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about anything related to the housing market, feel free to click that link in my bio. We can set up a quick phone call and I can help you any way I can. No pressure whatsoever. So again, thanks for joining me today. And until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you on the next show. Bye everybody.